Hi, welcome to USC.com, uh, the consultation exercise we're doing with the Foreign Minister. I'm here with uh, David Miliband, who's very, very kindly agreed to answer the questions of USC users, most of which have come from Welsh users via our uh, partner websites in Wales. Uh, I'm going to put the questions uh, in order of popularity in most cases, but we've done a little bit of selection and, and tried to get a, a good cross-section of themes. So I'm going to start off by asking Foreign uh, Minister, the first question, Foreign Secretary. Uh, you've mentioned that climate change is a foreign policy issue. Uh, could you explain a bit more about that? Well, I think that climate change is discussed in terms of its environmental impact, and the targets for climate change are measured in terms of emissions and the number of grams of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. But I think that people are discovering that climate change is more than an environmental issue. It's got an economic component. Uh, I would argue that going low carbon has net economic benefits. That's certainly what Lord Stern showed. It's got cultural aspects. You want to live in a throwaway society, but it's also got foreign policy aspects. So, for example, uh, the extent to which oil is high price or low price has big foreign policy consequences. The extent to which climate change drives uh, weather patterns and that drives migration can cause foreign policy consequences. If you think about a country like Bangladesh, if it's true that 20 or 25 percent of its population is going to find itself underwater in 30 years' time, that has big consequences for neighbouring uh, countries. So I think in that sense you can think of climate change as a foreign policy, not just an environmental question. This question is from the user Sherrod Harvey. In the light of the current economic meltdown, it seems that countries are at last beginning to work together. Is now an ideal time to build the issue of climate change into the uh, economic rescue package? something that will deal not only with more efficient ways of creating energy but also combating negative effects of consumer culture in developing countries. Well there's a big argument happening in Europe and around the world about whether the economic downturn means that we should put the climate change agenda on a back burner or whether in fact the opposite like the person asking the question in fact the fight against climate change can be part of the fight against economic downturn and the government very strongly supports that latter position. When you think about energy efficiency, when you think about the massive uh, energy investment that's going to have to take place around the world, the International Energy Authority say a trillion dollars a year needs to be spent for 20 years to service energy needs. Those are all things with big economic consequences and potentially big positive economic benefits if you get on with them. I'm not convinced that the average person cares too much about foreign policy because by its very nature it doesn't directly affect them. What they do care about though I'm sure is being involved in wars with other countries, and on the last occasion this happened with the UK, the majority of British people were not in favour, uh, clearly against it, and yet it went ahead. Will the people be listened to in the future? This question comes from the user Jackman. Well, I think foreign policy does affect us, and we do have a moral interest in it, but the effects on us of terrorism, climate change, a conflict, uh, are, I think, evident. They may be at one step removed, but they do have impacts on us. In respect of uh, the, the moral conscience that is referred to or the views that people have, it's not just on questions of war that people have strong views. People have strong views about Burma. People would have strong views about the abuse of human rights anywhere. In respect of the decision to go to war, the government said that that should always be the decision that's made with parliamentary uh, approval. But in the end, big political decisions can't be a matter for um, Big Brother-style referenda. Uh, you've got to take the decisions and then... Uh, face the consequences. And in our political system, you do that through general elections, and I think that's the right way of doing it. This question is from a user, William. Will, with the financial crisis in the UK and in the rest of the world, will the government review its overseas aid budget? Uh, we're very committed to our commitments on uh, overseas aid. Uh, overseas aid spending was going down in 1997. It's going up significantly now towards the 0.7% target. I think the other thing to say is it's not just aid that's important for international development. You need a trade round, you need to have conflict prevention and you need good governance. I met the uh, president of Ghana today which is a country which has got strong economic and social development but it's also got political development and a very strong commitment to free and fair elections in December. The president is not running for re-election and he's allowing a new uh, person to take over from either the government or from the opposition. I think that's important as well. This question comes from DJ Swansea. Uh, have any governments in the last few decades had any bad ideas on foreign policy, uh, made any mistakes? The 
the reason I'm asking you is because you said something on BBC Wales about the UK having some of the best ideas on foreign policies. Uh, presumably, we're good, also good at learning from our mistakes as well. Well, it's right. You've got to learn from what goes well and what doesn't go so well. I always say that in respect of Iraq, whatever you think of the decision to go to war in the first place, it's clear that we were far more effective at winning the war than in planning for the peace. And so we've got to learn from that. But I think most people would go back over 30 or 40 years and say, of course there are things that go well and of course there are things that don't go so well. That's part of, part of political life. I was wondering what you would think of an independent Wales that has a voice in the UN and international affairs but is still part of the United Kingdom. I think the Wales and the Welsh voice would be weaker, separate from the UK. Uh, because Wales is part of the UK, we all have a voice, not just at the UN, but in the G8 group of leading industrialised countries, a leading voice in the European Union. And we can also pool our uh, power and, uh, within the UK. And so uh, the decision to go independent isn't just a decision to opt out of the NHS. It would be a decision to opt out of the G8 and opt out of uh, the major decision-making fora. Uh, and those, that's one of many reasons I think it's not a very good thing. This question comes from the Sixer State. Do you think that national interests of the four countries of the UK are given equal weighting? And uh, can you think of an occasion when their interests might conflict in terms of UK foreign policy? Well, we try to give proper weight to all the aspects of UK opinion. For example, in Europe, which is an obvious area where there are uh, interests of different UK nations and regions in regional policy and uh, structural adjustment aid, uh, structural funds, uh, we try to, before, before the main European councils that the Prime Minister and I attend, we have meetings with representatives of the devolved assemblies, uh, the Pat Scottish Parliament, the uh, Northern Ireland Assembly as well. So there are proper mechanisms to try to make sure that we get the right uh, balance. And I think that, that that is important. Obviously, when it comes to uh, the distribution of EU funds, you could think that one part of the UK is competing with another, but actually we're more often competing with other countries. And that's why it's important to have objective criteria. This question is on, on a, a, a still very important, but perhaps less policy orientated matter. Uh, it comes from Robbins. Being an Arsenal fan, what is your opinion of Arsene Wenger's foreign policy of, of playing only foreign players? Well, I think that given that Theo Walcott is our star of the year, Arsene Wenger's bucked the trend and shown that you can, you can buy British and do well. Yeah. Okay, uh, th this question is from D. Williams, 71. Um, he says very simply, we won't be able to afford the war in Afghanistan now, will we? Well, I think we've got to, given that the uh, Pakistani border area with Afghanistan is the source of the majority of the terrorism that we are affected by here. And so the development of, of Afghanistan into a society that can defend itself and stop itself being overrun by the Taliban, I think is something that is necessary for our own national security.